Howdy again everyone, and let's get straight into reviewing the socks off this new little Fuji lens which has quickly picked up a great reputation for itself, the XF 33mm f1.4 for their X mount system cameras. Here it is, a handsome little devil. Fuji recently launched both this 33mm f1.4 lens and an 18mm f1.4 as well, and to my mind this was their way of renewing their aging 35mm and 16mm f1.4 lenses, neither of which had a great reputation for image quality, although those two older lenses admittedly have their fans. The 35mm f1.4 lens is 10 years old now and wasn't anything particularly special back in 2012, in terms of image quality anyway. Let's hope Fuji can pull something really new out of the bag here, as at $800 US dollars or £700 here in the UK, it certainly costs a bit more than the 35mm option. Let's start by looking at its build quality. The aesthetic design, solid metallic build quality and tough weather sealed fit and finish of this lens tick every box, ring every bell and float every boat that I have. It is just gorgeous and feels like an unyielding luxury product. As I mentioned, it's reassuringly weather sealed, including but not limited to a rubber gasket around the lens mount. The aperture ring has just the right amount of clickiness to it, and it can be locked in or out of automatic mode if so desired. The metallic focus ring feels incredibly smooth to turn, although the focus motor responds a bit jerkily to it being turned. Some good news for video makers is that the lens only displays any real focus breathing when focusing right up to the closest distances, from focusing down to half a metre away or closer, so that is useful too. The autofocus motor is exactly what you would expect from a brand new top of the line lens, silent, accurate and fast, with no problems when shooting in autofocus continuous mode. The lens's filter size is 58mm wide and it comes with a decently sized plastic hood. The lens does not feature image stabilisation. It weighs 360 grams, so you will know it's on your camera, but it's not heavy. Overall, while this may be a pretty expensive lens to buy, you absolutely will not feel short changed by its build quality, not for one second. But what about image quality? I'm testing it today on a Fuji X-T3 camera with its 26 megapixel APS-C sized sensor. In-camera corrections, as usual for a Fuji camera, are turned on. At f1.4 straight away, we see excellent sharpness and contrast in the middle of the image, and the corner image quality, a little softer with slightly lower contrast but still very good really. Let's stop down to f2, and right away we see a lovely jump in sharpness. The image quality in those corners is now excellent, and stop down to f2.8 for basically perfect sharpness across the entire image. It's only when you stop down as far as f11 that a little softness begins to creep in due to the effects of diffraction. Overall though, the mediocre sharpness of the old 35mm lens has now been replaced with bright, shining excellence, and I'd be happy to use this new lens for any professional application without a moment's hesitation. Fuji have really delivered here, although interestingly, it's not quite as sharp as their new 18mm f1.4 lens that I recently tested, which should have been a bit harder for them to design. Well, anyway, let's see about this lens's distortion and vignetting by taking some pictures in RAW and processing them with third-party software. Without those in-camera corrections, the lens projects some notable pincushion distortion and, unsurprisingly, pretty heavy vignetting at f1.4. Stop down to f2 or f2.8 to see those corners brighten up, although vignetting never completely goes away without corrections. Ok, let's take a look at close up image quality now. The lens can focus as closely as 30cm to your subject, which is another feather in its cap. I love standard lenses that can focus nice and close. And the further good news is that image quality close up is virtually as sharp. Stop down to f2 for just a touch of extra sharpness there. Now let's see how well the lens works against bright lights. Once again, it receives a clean bill of health from me, 
Flaring and glaring are very low here, even when bright lights are right there in the picture. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma levels. At f1.4, we do see some coma smearing on bright points of light in the corners of your images, although I've seen much worse than this before. Stop down to f2, and it quickly goes away pretty much completely. Now, let's zoom out and look for sun stars. You need to stop down to f8 for sun stars to become really noticeable. At f11, and particularly f16, they become pretty impressive. Now, let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. Deeply out of focus backgrounds look lovely and soft here. Particularly bright points of light can jump out a little too much though, and interrupt the general smoothness. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. At f1.4 you can see just a little colour fringing on bokeh highlights here, with a particular orange colour before the plane of focus. Stop down to f2, and it begins to go away. Overall then, well, just like the new 18mm f1.4 lens that I tested a few months ago, I love, love, love this new Fuji 33mm f1.4. Everything about it is spot on, from its tight and simple build quality to its lovely image quality, which is about as good as you can realistically ask for. It may cost a bit more than the older 35mm f1.4 lens, but it simply plays in a different league altogether, and so it comes highly recommended. Ok, I loved testing that lens, I'm pretty excited about how busy Fuji have been recently, the X system is going from strength to strength. I'm kinda glad I invested in an X-T3 camera. I also love putting these free reviews together for you all. If you'd like to support the channel and get all kinds of bonus content, then do check out my Patreon page in the description below, and for all of you who are already supporting the channel, a huge thank you.